start our there we go. So we are recording today's session. Um, I do want to let everyone know that our recording is just of our speakers, so we won't be recording any girls' faces. Um, that means that you are welcome to turn your video on or you can keep it off. It's totally up to you, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, also, before we get too far ahead, my name is Amy. Hi, everybody. Um, if you've been on our Meet and Expert sessions before, you've seen my lovely, friendly face. Um, but my name is Amy and I'm the Community Partnerships Manager for Girl Scouts of Colorado, which means that I get to work with awesome people like Ranger Laura um, to bring together these cool opportunities for Girl Scouts. Um, a few housekeeping items. I already mentioned that we're recording the session. Please feel free to turn your video on if you'd like to, but it's certainly not required. Um, we do have our chat boxes available. You can message me directly if you need anything right now. We will open our chat box later um, for you to answer some questions um, and then for you to ask Ranger Laura some questions yourself. So we will keep the chat box closed for the most part and we'll open it up at certain times and we'll let you know when the chat box is open so that you can um, enter things and for us to see your answers and enter in any questions. Um, but if you have any technical questions um, or anything like that, the chat box is always available to you. Um, we will uh, be together for an hour today. So we'll end by six o'clock mountain time. Um, we have Ranger Laura, who is a national park ranger from Black, Ca from Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. Um, I'm going to lead us through the Girl Scout Promise and Law, and then I'll turn things over to her. She has an awesome presentation for all of you. Um, and she'll be asking you some questions as well. So I will say, if you have questions during the presentation, please try to hold on to them until we're ready for our questions. Um, her, she built this wonderful presentation for all of us today using uh, the questions that you all submitted in registration. So she'll hopefully be answering a lot of your questions and then we'll open up the questions for all of you as well. So all that being said, let's get things started with the Girl Scout Promise in Law. So please follow along with me from home. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. And now of course the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong and responsible for what I say and do and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place and be a sister to every Girl Scout. All right, well done everybody and I am now ready to turn things over to Ranger Laura, who's a National Park Ranger at Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. Thank you so much for that introduction, Amy. That's great. And thank you guys so much for showing me your faces. First of all, if you've ever been to a national park before, either wave your hand at me, give me a thumbs up, stand up, whatever you'd like to do. Oh, awesome. Okay, so glad. How many of you have been to Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park, which is my park? If you have, raise your hand, give me a thumbs up, stand up. Okay, I've got a couple of no's. All right, I'm gonna show you a picture then. I'm gonna share my screen. So let's see here. Okay. So that I can show you a little bit more about what exactly Black Canyon looks like and what just national parks look like as well. All right, Amy, gives me a, a heads up when, when my screen is sharing. There we go, okay. Looks great. Excellent, thank you. So this, this is Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. You might see that there's a river at the very bottom of the canyon. That's good, they call the Gunnison River. You might also notice that this canyon looks pretty impressive. It's a very steep, it's a very deep canyon. You're looking at about 2,000 feet. The river's about 2,000 feet below you. You might also notice that the shape of this canyon is a little unusual for canyons. Most canyons kind of look kind of flat, like that V, but this canyon looks pretty steep, like this. And rangers, we call this steep, deep, and narrow, okay? So first of all, where is Black Canyon located? You might see right there is Colorado in the red state. I'm gonna make a zoom in on Colorado here. And that right there is where Black Canyon of the Gunnison is located. Can you find where you are 
on that map? How close are you to Black Canyon and Bogonis National Park? Are you really close or are you a way away? Hmm. Well, I hope some of you are pretty close. I see a couple of you are kind of far away, really far away. All right, well, it might take a while to come visit. Good thing I brought pictures so that you guys can come see it today. So to give you a, a comparison, I said Black Canyon was really steep, it was 2,000 feet. Just to show you other buildings that that compares to, Black Canyon is deeper than almost every building in the world. There's only one building that's taller than Black Canyon is deep. You can see that, that's number seven, the Burj Khalifa in the United Arab Emirates. But the canyon is deeper than the, than the Eiffel Tower, than the Sears Tower, than the Empire State. It's a pretty deep canyon. Okay. Now going in back to the Park Service, just like you guys, you guys have a logo or a symbol. We in the Park Service have a symbol too. I'm going to zoom in closer so you get a good view of it, but it's also right next to me. Now your challenge, this symbol represents all of the things as the National Park Service we protect. There are six things in this picture. I'm going to give you 15 seconds. Can you find all six things? Go. Okay. And if you'd like to, you could chat into the chat box. Amy will be able to read what you're what you were saying. See if you can get all six things. Yeah. I opened up the chat box and then somebody mentioned that they couldn't see your screen anymore, but I just want to make really? sure can everyone see Ranger Laura's screen still? Sometimes so. Yeah, okay. I see a lot lots of yeses. Great. Okay. okay. If something happened and you can't see Ranger Laura's screen anymore, maybe try leaving the meeting and then coming back in. Very smart. Okay. So that was our 15 seconds, more than actually. Thank you for the check that we could see my screen. Amy, what were some of the things that people said that they could see? What are some of the comments in the chat box? Um, animals, mountains, trees, water, sky. Yes, so animals, you said that. We do have our lovely white bison, our buffalo here on the symbol. Let's see, you said mountains. Mm -hmm. So mountains in the background, that's a good one. So we do protect mountains, or in the case of Black Canyon, I kind of say, you know, mountains go like this. It's a reverse mountain. A canyon is a reverse mountain. It's an upside down mountain, okay? So I say that it's the way that the land is shaped, right? Like a landscape, okay? Then you said there were trees, yep. so plants, right? So we protect all of the plants. There's a lovely little pond right there, a little lake, so we protect all the water. Did anyone mention the shape of the symbol? Did anyone say land? A couple of did. The land, okay. Yeah. So when we look at this shape, something that we call an arrowhead, and give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Do animals make arrowheads. Do animals make arrowheads? I'm getting some thumbs down. Like if I were to say like a bald eagle could make an arrowhead. Yeah, actually our animals can't. But do people make arrowheads? Yes, we do. So we've got the shape. No, I think I'm missing one. That's only five, right, Amy? One, two, three, four, five. Did anyone say, and some people say this, they're like, Ranger Laura, do you protect the sky? And I say we do, actually. I think someone might have said that in the chat box. Maybe. Oh, that's awesome. No, they, I can see that. Thank you. Yes, we do protect the sky. Yes, both the air quality that you breathe. Great job. Not everyone gets that. Yeah, both the air that you breathe, but also the night sky. We're going to come back to that, OK? So keep that in mind. OK, so now that you know, your experts on what the National Park Service protects, we're gonna play a game. The game is you're gonna guess, is it a national park or no? So yes, national park, no, it's not a national park. Are you ready? Can I get some thumbs up? Yep, okay. 
first picture, is that a national park? Is it not a national park? Oh, I, I got a lot of thumbs down on that one. No, that's not a national park, right? That's an amusement park. What is that, like Disneyland, Disney World? Yeah, no, that's not a national park. You would not see park rangers there. Good job. Okay, next one, ready? Is it a national park? Is it not? Oh, okay, I'm getting some thumbs up on this one. Yes, this is a national park. Any ideas which national park? Any ideas? All right, and if you do have an idea, feel free to chat, to put that in the chat box. It's not really close to us in Colorado. It's all the way away in California. I have a few Yosemites. Nice. You guys do know your national parks. Yes, this is Yosemite. Great job. Okay, next picture. Ready? Get those thumbs ready. National park? Not a national park. Oh, I'm getting some clear nose. No, that's a playground, right? Do we see playgrounds in national parks? Generally, no. National parks, I don't see a playground on this symbol, right? We don't generally protect things that you can play on, although there are things that you can do for fun, right? You can recreate, you could go hiking, but generally not playgrounds. Okay, next one, ready? National park, not a national park. Nice, I'm getting some thumbs up. This is a national park. Any idea which national park this one is? Chat it in the chat box. And I've opened the I've chat, opened the make sure that you uh, make change your message so that it goes to everybody that we can all see your answers. Okay, some Mesa Verdes. Nice, excellent. Yes, Mesa Verde, you guys got it. Um, perfect, okay, I guess I knew you guys knew your national park. Okay, last challenge picture, ready? And of course, my, I, my, my mouse was in the chat box. Now it's on the PowerPoint. There you go. Is it a national park or is it not? I love seeing all the comments that you guys have been there. This is great. Okay, yes, yes, this is a national park. Which national park is this one? Yes, great job, everyone. This is Arches National Park. You can see by the delicate arch, yes. So these are all really special places, the national parks, right? All special places that we have decided to, to say that, you know what, we're gonna set this aside and keep it as it is. So everyone can come and enjoy it as it is. So you guys are experts on this picture, right? We're gonna go through next. I'm gonna show you what about each of those, of those six elements we protect at Black Canyon at my park here, okay? So again, going into Black Canyon, which is known for being steep, deep, and narrow. I want you to think, I want you to guess. We're gonna go in order, we're gonna go in animals first. What animals do you think we protect at Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park? Feel free to chat in the chat box. Ooh, I've got some bison, some condors. Bison and buffalo are the same things. You can see in the symbol, some, be some bears, some birds. Okay, we do. We have a lot of those. We actually don't have bison here because it's a canyon and they kind of like flat land instead of, instead of canyons, instead of really steep areas. But some of the greatest pictures that I have of our animals, we do have the bighorn sheep, right? Thank you, Morgan, for typing that in. I love this picture of a bighorn sheep found right here in our park. And on the left, you can see our black bear just kind of chilling out in a tree, taking a nap, right? We have peregrine falcons, which are the fastest bird in the world. They can fly over, over 200 miles an hour, right? So all of these animals, every single animal from the fish to the ants, to the birds, to the mammals, uh, that we protect all of them in our national parks, okay? So I'm gonna ask you now, what can you do to protect the animals in Black Canyon? What are things that you can do to help me keep our animals safe? Feel free to chat in the chat box. 
I love your comments. Yeah, we make sure that we don't feed our animals. That's actually something that I get a lot when people say, hey, Ranger Laura, when do you feed the animals? We actually don't because they're wild animals. And if they're wild animals and you start feeding them some people food, they're gonna become dependent on humans, on people to feed them. And they'll stop looking for their own food. And even if it's garbage, that's still human food. That's still people food that animals are eating. Um, and it's really sad when animals have gotten used to eating people food because when winter comes and visitors stop coming to the national parks in as many numbers as they normally do, there's not a lot of food, a lot of human food for those animals to eat. And a lot of them might not make the winter. Um, so this picture right here is showing how we as park rangers have actually bear proofed our trash cans. So you can see the green bar on the very top of the trash can, that bear isn't able to get his claws up to it. So he can't open the trash to get into the food. And so that's one way that we as park rangers protect it. One way that you can keep our animals safe too, by making sure that you don't uh, leave food out, that you make sure you throw it away, maybe in a bear proof trash um, and make sure you keep our animals wild. Okay, so next one, we're gonna move on from our animals to our plants. What are some of the plants that we see here at Black Canyon? Or here you could see one of our beautiful, beautiful purple flowering plants. We do have lupin. Uh, we do have the, the Colorado columbine. You can see in the picture on the left, we, it's a beautiful picture of the aspens changing colors, right? And you can see the canyon down below and so the more the Doug fir and the ponderosa pines that we have in addition to the pinyon pines. So some beautiful trees. But again, all, yes, plants, flowers, all of the plants and flowers we protect in Black Canyon. Okay. You might guess this is coming. So what can you do? to help me protect the plants. What something that you can do to help park rangers keep the plants safe? Chat in the chat box. And the chat is open. Just make sure that you're messaging it to everyone so we can all see your answer. And then I just wanna remind everyone to please um, try to keep the chat focused only on your answers to Ranger Laura's questions. Oh, and I see some great answers in the chat box. Stay on the trail. Don't pick the wildflowers, right? Look with your eyes and not with your hands. That's a great one. Don't step on them, right? Stepping on a plant might make it hard for it to grow, right? Take only pictures, leave only footprints. That is a very classic leave no trace rule that we follow as park rangers. And I'm glad to hear that you, you Girl Scouts know. Um, that's perfect. Don't crush the crust. If you've heard of biological crust, yes. Great answers. I love this picture because it's showing all of those great junior rangers that are staying on the trail. It's very tempting to be like, oh, look at that. Let's just step over there. But that's one of those things where we look with our eyes, right? Not our feet. Perfect. You guys got this. Okay. So we did our animals. We did our plants. We're going to move next. How do you protect no, oh, I'm in the chat still, sorry. How do you protect our water? Hmm. So I'm gonna think, I'm actually gonna think about this. It's just a second. How do you protect water? Because here at the Black Canyon, you can see we're at the river, the very bottom of the canyon. You can see the walls 2,000 feet above you. This is a view that not many people get to see because the canyon is so formidable. It's so difficult to get down to the bottom. So I love your answers. I'm going to move on to how do you protect the water? Don't swim in it. Don't drink it, right? Um, keep, keep, don't pollute the water, right? Don't throw trash in the water, right? I love it. Don't pollute it. Um, don't, don't empty like your soda bottle into the water. Those are all really good answers. Well, you can see here in these pictures, these are park rangers, right? There are park water scientists. We call them our hydrologists. They're actually testing the water to make sure that it's good and it's clean. In the picture on the left, you can see he's collecting a water bottle of water. We're gonna run tests on that to see how much oxygen, how much air is in that for the fish to breathe, right? Um, what is the temperature of that water? Because it needs to be pretty cold for the fish that live here to live. 
On the right, you can see somebody's using the forceps to actually pull out little animals that live in the waters to count them to see how many animals are in that water. Let me, let me ask you, do you think that we want to find a lot of animals in the water or very few animals in the water? A lot or few? I'm getting a lot like big, right? We want to find a lot, right? Because if there's a lot of animals in that water, like little bugs and little, we would actually call them macroinvertebrates, um, that means that the water is healthy, right? And it also means that there's a lot of bugs in the water, there's a lot of food for the fish to eat. It means it's a really healthy river. So that's, that's what we want to look for as scientists, as park rangers, and how you can protect us help us protect it by making sure we keep that water clean and free from garbage. You got it. Okay, next one. We're gonna go to our landscape, okay? And here is a picture. This is an iconic view inside the, the canyon. It's actually called the Curaconte Needle. Do you see that shape? It almost looks like a pyramid. This is a really special thing because nature formed this. You know, park rangers didn't go in there and try and dig out this shape, like wind and weather, and water carved this perfect pyramid shaped needle inside the canyon. So that's when I talked about how the land is formed is one of the things that we protect as the National Park Service. This is really a cool thing to see. Um, so how can you help me protect the landscape, the way the land is formed? I love it. Um, try not to erode it, right? So Erosion is just when things move, when rocks move. And that's very natural, right? It is, but, but when people like start throwing rocks over the edge and kicking dirt, like that's not natural. That's, that's people causing erosion, right? So yeah, you got this. You don't wanna pick up any rocks. I think about the girl in this picture and I have so many students, so many people come up to me and say, hey, Ranger Laura, can I take a rock home? It's just a tiny rock, see? Like it's a pretty rock. Can I take it home? Nobody's gonna even notice that this rock is missing from this park. What do you think I tell them? What do you think I tell them when someone says, hey, can I take this rock home? Yeah, I see a lot of no's in that chat box. No, it's part of the mountain, right? No, it belongs on this landscape. And no, what if everybody took a rock home? Exactly. If everyone kept taking a rock and everyone did it, then soon enough, we'd actually be missing all the rocks. And that's a big part of that landscape that we protect, right? So that's why everything that you see in a national park has to stay in that national park. We protect even the rocks. It's so cool. There's one more thing, two more things. We have the shape, our history that we protect in park. And these are old time pictures. These are from like the early 1900s of two of the earliest explorers. They actually rafted the Gunnison River at the very bottom of the canyon all the way through 50 miles of this river. And they tried it two different times. The first time, they didn't make it. They tried in wooden boats to go over these rapids in really fast moving water. What do you think happened to those wooden boats? they didn't make it. They, on the first day of that trip, the wooden boats hit a rock and smashed to pieces. So the next year, these two explorers came back and they, they rafted the river on inflatable rubber mattresses. What we today would use as river rafts, right? And they made it through. So this is part of the history, the past that we protect as a national park. So I think you know what's coming. How can you help me protect the past? How can you help me protect the past? And that's kind of a tricky question. I'm going to ask it this way. The picture that you see on a screen is an arrowhead, right? The same shape as our symbol that someone would have made hundreds of years ago, right? So it's the past, it's the history. If you found this, when you were hiking in Black Canyon, do you think you should take it home? 
No, right? Well, first of all, it's in a national park, so it, it should stay there. But second of all, it's part of history. And if you were to take that arrowhead home, well, then it's a part of history that no one else would know because you took that story with you. That would be like the story I just told you of those two early explorers. If someone took that home and no one else knew, that story would be lost. And so if you find an arrowhead, what do you think you should do? Hmm. So you're not going to take it home. But what should you do? I'm getting chat in the chat box if you'd like to. If you find an arrowhead, what should you do? Oh, I love it. I love seeing these answers in the chat box. I'm saying, I see, don't touch it. It's cultural. Um, give it back. Leave it where it is. And that's exactly it. You want to leave it exactly where it is. Um, you don't even want to move it from where you found it. What you do want to do is come find a park ranger. Yes, I love that somebody wrote that in the chat. Find a park ranger and tell them where it is or show them where it is so that we can protect it and we can collect the story that goes with it. Oh, you guys are great. There's one more thing that we protected that Nevea got right. That one element of our arrowhead, our night sky, our air. Yes, and so you, right here I have a picture of the night sky at Black Canyon. You can see the river at the bottom. You can see the canyon walls and you can see the Milky Way in the stars above, in the sky above. You can see the stars and the planets in our universe all in that line above Black Canyon. And you can only see the night sky because there are no lights that are turned on at night in a national park. If we had buildings, I'm thinking of the lights inside my, my office right now or inside your home, right? They're turned on right now so that we can see each other. But if you wanted to be able to see the night sky, you can't have lights turned on. So in the entire park at night, we keep only the lights on that are important, that are essential for safety, right? So I think you guys know what's coming. How can you help me protect the night sky? If as park rangers, we make sure we turn off lights at night and there aren't any left on at night so you can see, what's something that you can do? So, I'm gonna help you out. You can also chat in the chat box. We're gonna make sure that we don't have light pollution, right? And the way to do that is to make sure the lights are turned off. And luckily enough, I have six steps that anyone can use, no matter where you are, to help reduce light pollution where you live. Wait, right, it says, just as I said, only lights that are important need to stay on. Only light when you need it, right? So I think about this, my front porch, I only leave the light on when I'm gonna go in and out, but I make sure I turn the light off when I'm gonna go to sleep. Because if I'm asleep, I don't need to use that light. That light doesn't need to be on, right? You make sure the light shines where it needs to be, right? These are all things that you can do right now at your home, right? Turn off the lights when you're done with them and you can protect our ability to see the stars at night. Okay, so, that's Black Canyon. I'm gonna go into kind of why I decided to be a park ranger, kind of why I'm here, right? Um, my ranger story, as I said. So uh, some of my earliest memories um, are going on family road trips. And you can see the picture of me. I actually was in a Girl Scout troop. Um, and when I was six years old, um, my parents decided to take us to Mesa Verde National Park um, for us to experience just a different culture, right? To experience the past, right? To experience what it would have been like to live here in Colorado a thousand years ago, right? And so I went on this trip and I was just amazed. I loved learning about the history. I loved learning about what it would be like to, to live in a different time in a different place. And that really started it off for me. Um, I started spending time outside. I loved um, going away on, on our, our Girl Scout trips, we did a, a sleepover trip, um, an overnight, uh, just going hiking um, and camping. Um, and then every road trip we took, I learned everything I could about every national park. And the picture on the right is me getting sworn in as a junior ranger 
um, at Effigy Mounds, one of the national parks we were visiting. Um, but I, I could, would just study everything I could about national parks to learn everything I could. Um, and I just enjoyed spending the time outside. And so naturally, when I got to time to think about what do I want to do when I grow up, um, I loved history and I wanted to study well, how people lived in the past. So this is a, a picture of me in high school actually volunteering um, on a dig, an archaeological dig um, in South Dakota, just to learn about what life was like in the past. Um, and I loved it. I loved being outside. I loved learning about the past. It was amazing. So I went to college. I got my degree in archaeology because I wanted to do more of this. Um, and then uh, I worked. This is me as an AmeriCorps Vista. This is how I, I got into my Park Service career. So I volunteered at Aztec Ruins National Park. Um, and I, I spent um, actually a year there learning about the park, learning about being a park ranger, learning the skills that I would need to be a park ranger. And then I became a park ranger. So I, 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 and I worked at Mesa Verde National Park, the pictures that we saw. And I would give public tours. So you can see here, I'm giving um, tours of the different dwellings inside Mesa Verde National Park, answering visitor questions, um, just explaining what I knew about the past and what we don't know about the past. Um, which brings me to my job here at Black Canyon. And you can see on the left, I'm giving an education program uh, actually for uh, second graders, right? And we're learning about different animals. What I love, I absolutely love about my job is that I get to work with youth. I get to work with students and with kids and I get to explain why Black Canyon is special. Uh, and I get to lead field trips where students come to me and learn about Black Canyon. And the picture on the right is the moment that I live for, is when students that have never been here before get to stand on the edge of this canyon and go, wow, that's beautiful. Can you just feel the odd silence in that picture? None of those students had been to Black Canyon before and they're just amazed by the canyon. That is what I love about what I do. But that is not the only job that there are in the Park Service in, in, in Black Canyon. So we're gonna go through next. There's a lot of different jobs that a park ranger can have. And we might kind of look the same because we all wear the same uniform, but we don't do the same job, okay? So I'm gonna go through and walk through. And if there's a job that you're interested in, I want you to stand up or wave at me that, hey, this is one that I'm, I'm excited about, okay? So right here, first one, law enforcement. So I get asked all the time, hey, Ranger Laura, are you a cop, right? Are you a police officer? I'm not. As a park ranger, there are some police officers, there are some park rangers that are trained as police officers, and they would do the normal things that, that police officers would do, like, um, like closing the road, like keeping people safe, right? Um, in addition to keeping people safe, they might also do fire protection, right? So if there's a wildfire in a national park, someone needs to be able to put it out. And so these people go out and they dig line or use helicopters and drop water or fire suppressant to keep the park safe. So fire protection. There's also search and rescue. What if someone gets lost when they're hiking? Right? Or what if someone falls and hurt them, hurts themselves? So that's where we have people that are search and rescue trained that will go and save people if they need it. Right? There are biologists or biology rangers. Now these rangers I think are pretty cool because they get to go out and study animals and they get to go out and find bats or do studies on um, prairie dogs or keep our bears safe. These are the rangers that get to go out and do um, all the different things to keep our animals in the park safe. That's pretty cool. There's also our water scientists or our hydrologists and they study everything to do with our water, right? We're keeping our water safe. So you can see in the picture, one scientist on the left is actually studying algae, which is that green plant that lives in water, right? And they do some lab work. 
to make sure this is part of our, our testing the water to make sure that it's safe and good water for our fish and all the other animals that live in the water. Okay, we have our hydrologist. Cool, I see someone who wants to do that. We also have our archeologist like me, like what I got my degree in. And this, these are some pictures, not of Black Canyon. I, I borrowed these pictures from Mesa Verde so that you could see. But these are the people that, that will make sure that the buildings or, or the items from the past are kept safe so that people can come and see them as they would have been however many hundreds of years ago. So you can see on the left, they're actually repointing a wall. So they're putting mortar back in the wall to keep the wall standing, the ancient wall standing. And on the right, they're actually using caulk to redirect water away from the dwellings to keep them safe from the weather. So it's a really cool thing, okay? Oh, interesting. I don't know if you've ever uh, thought that the Park Service might need people in media production, production. So taking pictures or making videos explaining why the park is special, but we do. And you can see here some pictures of our media production uh, specialist who's taking videos of a ranger explaining why the canyon is shaped the way it is. Um, just to, again, explain to people uh, that are curious what we do in the national parks. There's also aquatic invasive species. That's a tech, that's a really big word, right? Um, technicians, this would be the word. And, and they're keeping the water safe again against any animal that might come in that shouldn't be there, right? And so in my park in Black Canyon, we actually, we do boat inspections to make sure that there aren't mussels like zebra mussels or quagga mussels that are invasive species coming into our waters because if you have a different animal come into an area that it's not supposed to be in, it competes with the other animals for food and water. Um, and that makes it harder for the animals that do live here to live. So while we don't feed wild animals, we do make sure that their food is there so they can live as wild animals. Okay. Um, there's also maintenance. Uh, this is a really cool project that we were working on on putting railroad cars back on railroad tracks. Um, but we need someone to, to be able to move heavy equipment um, or to repair buildings um, to keep our offices um, ready to work so that everyone else can work, right? So there's maintenance jobs. There's also interpretation, which I had mentioned about giving public tours, right? People come to the park and you're answering questions like, well, what kind of hikes are there? Uh, where should I go? Um, what are the cool things to see? We need people to explain to the public all the different things that they can do and see. And then there are education rangers. And this is my job in this park, where I get to work with students and with youth to explain why Black Canyon is special um, and teach Leave No Trace, uh, teach how you can come to a park as a safe visitor, right? Uh, leading field trips and going into the classrooms to give programs. These are the different things that I do in my job. So how can you help protect our parks? How can you learn more? So in my story, how I started off was with the Junior Ranger Program. And now as a ranger, when people ask me more of, you know, how can I help protect the park? In addition to all those brainstorming things we came up with earlier, the things that I think you can do the most to help us is to learn why each park is special. Because there are over 400 different national parks and all of them are special for a different reason. And by knowing what makes it special, you can share that with other people so that they will learn why it's special and they will want to keep it safe. And one of the easiest and most fun ways to do that is by learning through the Junior Ranger Program. So in our park, on the pictures, you can see there's a lot of different booklets. We have like the Night Sky booklet, right? Uh, we have the Junior Paleontology booklet. You can learn all about dinosaurs, right? Um, and these are actually booklets that you could do anywhere, including at home where you can learn about the night sky or learn about dinosaurs and how you can keep, you can protect them as well. As well as our uh, Girl Scout 
uh, resource stewardship badge, which is something else that you can also do to learn more. Uh, if you're interested in going into a ranger into a ranger career, one of the ones that we talked about, the what I the best advice I would have for you is to to volunteer to get into a park. Um, when I was in AmeriCorps Vista, I, I volunteered to gain that ranger experience. There really isn't a great way to learn it other than than being in the park and then doing the work and learning hands on. Um, but there are some great programs that you can do even in middle school and high school. The AmeriCorps programs, there's a program called the SCA or the ACE, that's the American Conservation Experience. Um, and those are all programs that, that do have programs going to high school. And I think some of them might down to middle school. Um, if you're interested, I would highly recommend the Youth Summit. By, it's hosted by an organization called the Preserve America. And that's the picture on the right. Um, at Black Canyon, we hosted 60 middle school and high school students uh, to learn for a week all about what made Black Canyon special. And they got to go hiking um, and look at petroglyphs um, and experience wilderness. And it was an amazing experience. And that program does start at seventh grade. So you could do it from seventh grade all the way up to 12th grade. And these are all great ways to kind of get that experience um, before going on to college and getting your four-year degree, um, which you would want to do to become a park ranger. Your degree would just matter based on what area of interest you're most interested in, right? If you're most interested in doing education, you're not necessarily gonna go study uh, law enforcement, right? So we can talk about that more too. Um, and that brings us back to our questions, Amy. So, you want to moder come in and moderate at this point? Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Ranger Laura. This was super interesting. I know I learned a lot. Um, so the chat box is now open for questions. I'll read them out loud for Ranger Laura to answer, and we have about 15 minutes for her to ask answer questions. Um, if we get a lot, I might close the chat box down again just so that we can make sure we get through all of them. But somebody asked while you were presenting, how do you decide to change the park that you're working in? Oh, great question. So as a ranger, I can move between parks. Uh, it's very much like getting a job anywhere else. I have to put in an application for the park that I want to work at. I have to interview. Um, and if they select me, then I, then I can move there. I can become a ranger at that park. Um, a lot of people ask me if it's like the military where you're assigned and you're forced to move. And that doesn't happen. Uh, it is a job that I apply to and I interview for. Um, lots of questions, so many good questions. And I wanna make sure folks, just to remind you, please keep the, whatever you're entering into the chat box, questions for Ranger or Laura. Um, how do you prevent serious injuries? And if they do happen, how are they treated? So I guess that means within the park. Yes. Um, so a lot of that is through education. We try to, to explain to people how serious the hike is that they're going to do. Um, so if somebody gets lost or injured on a hike, uh, we try to explain you know, how long is the hike, how many miles is it, how many hours will it take you, please take water. Um, but we do have rangers that do hike those trails. They do patrol to try and find people that might be hurt or lost and help them out. Um, so really through educating people about how to hike is how we prevent in injuries. Great. Um, and I'm actually, so I'm going to close the chat box again, but um, if you have questions, please feel free to put them into the chat box and I'll read them out loud for Ranger. Um, okay, so, so many questions. These are great. How much does a, and you can um, let me know if you think this, if you want to answer this or how you want to answer this, but um, what does a park ranger make a good living? Like how much money do you make a year? Not you specifically, but park rangers in general. Um, so I think that's an interesting question. All of that is, is public knowledge. You can actually Google how much does a park ranger make. Uh, it depends on, again, um, kind of what you're doing and what level you are. Like when you're a park superintendent, which is you know the, the boss of a park, you're going to be making more than you know a, a park ranger giving um, public programs, but it is a livable wage. Um, 
I, I don't think I could quote you what it is um, on average because it's such a, a widespread. Um, but you you can actually Google that. It would be um, through the Office of Personnel Management (OPM) that you would find that answer. Great. Um. Okay. Okay. Good. So many good questions. I want to make sure I get them. Um. So this is a question about you. Please. Do you have any pets, like a dog? And uh, somebody also ask, what is your favorite animal that lives inside the park? Oh, great questions. I don't have any pets, um, <laughs> but if I did, I would probably get a cat. Um, I just like how they're cuddly and they purr. Um, in my favorite animal in the park, um, I've actually never seen it, but there's a special cat it's called a, a ringtail cat, um, and it's it looks like a normal um, kind of wild cat, like a bobcat, except it's dark furred, and then it has a tail, a really long tail that has white, alternating white and dark stripes, um, and it's very rare. We know they are in the park, but only very few people have seen them. I think there's like like five sightings of them in the park in the last 100 years. It's something very wow. very rare. And really cool. special. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I hope you get to see one one day in person. I do too. Um, why is it called Black Canyon of the Gunnison? Excellent question. Um, it's called Black Canyon of the Gunnison because the dark gray rock, uh, it's a very dark color, which is pretty unusual in rocks. Um, and because the canyon is so steep, deep, and narrow, there are areas of the canyon that don't see sunlight. So they're always in shadow. So that's two reasons why it's called the Black Canyon. Very cool. That I'm gonna keep that in my trivia knowledge bank. It's a fun fact. It's a very fun fact. Mm -hmm. Oh, so Zoe asked in the picture that you showed us doing an archaeological dig, did you find anything? I did. In that in that exact unit, I I don't remember if I found a piece of pottery or I found an arrowhead, um, but I did find both of those in that dig, in that location, which cool. is really cool. The arrowhead that I found was um, 5,000 years old, and they could tell that based on the shape of the arrowhead. It's kind of weird to think that the shape changes, and we've been able to date it based on that, how old the arrowhead itself is. Wow. I'm learning so much today. I love this. Um, Jillian asked, why did you want to work at Black Canyon specifically? I wanted to work at Black Canyon because of the job. I wanted to work with kids. Um, it was something that I did at Aztec Ruins um, that I just loved. I wanted to lead field trips um, and I was really intrigued. I had only ever worked at parks that were about history before uh, and this was a very different park. It was a, a beautiful canyon. I've never seen a canyon like this. Um, anywhere else before or after. Um, and there's a lot of challenge um, in this canyon. I, it's really difficult to hike down to the, to the river at the bottom. You can do it, um, but the easiest trail is a mile um, with 2000, sorry, 1800 vertical feet. So you have to go all the way down and all the way back up. And it takes like really fit hikers, like four hours. To do that hike and that's the easy trail wow wow wow, wow. Yeah. Cool. yeah um if you are a park ranger are you considered a government employee yes working for the national park service which is an agency within the government um, we're actually underneath the uh, the department of the interior is where we are nestled as the park service um how do you just, and you, how does the park decide what sites to restore and what is being impacted by weather? Like, how are those decisions made? Like the photo you showed us. Uh, the photo oh, of the, the archeological uh, repair? Of the thing yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's a great question. So in Black Canyon, we do the same decisions based on um, the natural forces. So like if a trail is getting washed out, um, we'll kind of build up that trail so that more material doesn't go down uh, into the canyon. Um, at Mesa Verde, like that wall, 
it's, I mean, that wall is a thousand years old. At some point when the, the, mortar, um, the mortar erodes out, it falls out. If we didn't fix it, the entire wall would fall over. Um, so it's a hard balance because we want it to be as original as it, as it could be. So we're not just gonna repair and rebuild everything, um, but when it becomes that something will be destroyed, if we don't act, that's when we will repair something. That makes sense. Um, a lot of questions. What is your favorite national park other than Black Canyon of the Gunnison? You can't choose that. Oh, I can't choose Black Canyon. Um, okay. I would probably have to say Olympic National Park in Washington State, um, simply because it's a it's a temperate rainforest, uh, meaning it's like Colorado's weather, except everything is green, like a tropical rainforest in Mexico or South America, because there's so much moisture coming off of the ocean. Um, that park just has like, like a crazy um, tall mountain that you can climb, um, but you can also go like sea kayaking in the, in the ocean. Like, it's just amazing what you can do at that park. Cool, very cool. Um, do you have horses or are there horses at the park? Um, I don't have horses. There aren't any wild horses at Black Canyon. Interestingly enough, there are some parks that do have wild horses um, that they protect because it's one of the animals that lives in the park. Um, because they would have been, some of the, the horses that I'm thinking of were like wild Mustangs uh, that lived in the area and they live in the habitat protected by the park. So there are horses there. Um, what is the Department of the Interior? Can you explain that to us? Sure. Um, so. It's the simplest the our, explanation. Uh, right? Um, so when we take our entire government, right, um, like, our government's going to protect us. They've divided that government into different areas that have different focuses, right? That, that just say, I'm going to work on this area. Um, and the Department of the Interior, its focus is everything within the United States. Like, that's a really broad definition. But within that definition, you have the Park Service, which protects everything to be as natural as it can be. And you can kind of see how that fits underneath that umbrella of a government definition. Great, thank you. How does that work, Amy? Does that work? Yeah, that's a good explanation. Um, Jillian asked, what's the scariest thing that's happened to you at work? Especially, I think, as we learn like how steep and deep the canyon is, I mean, that's definitely an interesting question. Um, well, I'm going to actually share my screen again, because I've got a couple of pictures that I think will, will show that. Um, once I pull the right button up. So I, I think the Black Canyon looks beautiful and nothing really scary has happened um, to me. I think the coolest thing that happened to me was an animal encounter. Um, I was walking on a trail and I found, I saw a black bear um, and the black, black bear saw me. Uh, and it was a young, like two-year-old cub. So it was still, it was still not fully grown. Um, but I, I stopped and it stopped and we looked at each other and then the bear went running up the, the canyon, which was cool. Um, so this view of the canyon is one of my favorites. It's actually from the North Rim at a point called Exclama uh, Exclamation Point, if you're ever gonna go. And this is a picture from within the canyon. So I started hiking down and down below you can see kind of all the loose rocks uh, that the trail, mm -hmm. the trail is. It's not really a trail, it's, it's more of a route um, kind of a way to make it down to the river. And you can just see, you can't really see the angle in this picture, but that trail is like this, right? So you're like hiking down this really steep trail to get down to the river. Cool. So you mentioned hiking down the trail, but I wonder, um, a lot of questions have come down. What are the different ways that you can get down the canyon? Is it, um, 
Is it only hiking? Are there other ways that you can get down? There is, there's only one way that you can get down without hiking. Um, the most common way that people get down to the river is by hiking. Uh, the other way is that there is a, a road um, that you could drive down to a location called East Portal. Um, unfortunately, right now that road is closed because we're going into winter um, and it's so steep that during the winter with the snow and the ice, it's not safe to drive. Wow, great. All right. Well, we I think we've answered most of the questions. There have also been some great comments um, about how much folks are enjoying this awesome conversation. Um, I think we are just about out of time together tonight. So um, the last question that I two questions um, that I will ask you to wrap things up are first, is there any kind of piece of advice that you'd like to leave Girl Scouts with? I mean, um, there are a lot of cool trail adventure badges, a lot of lessons about leave no trace um, for girls, but is there any, just any lingering last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? And then I'll ask you my final question that the answer will, is, is a pretty easy, not easy one, but it, it's a fast one. Okay. Um, yes, there's a lot of advice I'd love to give you. There's <laughs> a lot that you can do as a Girl Scout. Um, one thing that I, I didn't go into is when you go into the story of each national park there's always at least one person that really was the hero of why that national park became a national park there's always at least one person that made it their mission to write letters to congress to write to their senators to really advocate to stand up and say no this this area should be protected and i i think as Girl Scouts, you guys are learning, uh, you know, how you can protect the environment. And there's all these things from leave no trace uh, to, to go volunteer at your national parks, to, to become a ranger, to learn how to become a ranger. But I think the biggest thing you can do is, is recognize the natural places, even in your backyard, in your community, and see what you could do to stand up and advocate for those places to be saved, to be protected whether it's a, a city park, then maybe you could organize like a garbage pickup. Like there are a lot of things that you right now can do. And it doesn't have to be a park ranger at a national park. There are things that you can do in your own community. And I would strongly encourage you to do that um, because you guys have the skills to do that. I love that advice. Thank you for sharing that with us, um, fantastic. So my last question before we really close things out is what is your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Oh, 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 what is my favorite Girl Scout cookie? Is it, it's the, um, is it the Samoas? That's the caramel with mm -hmm. the coconut and it, it's definitely the Samoas. Mm -hmm, hands down, I could eat an entire box in one sitting. Awesome, I love that. I love a good Samoa as well. Um, well, Ranger Laura, I really, I cannot thank you enough for participating in our meet and expert session today. I personally learned so much. Um, I see a lot of comments coming in about saying thank you. They really enjoyed this. Um, and yeah, I cannot thank you enough. Um, and thanks to all the Girl Scouts out there who are listening in, who are either listening live or listening to the recording. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate it. And hopefully all of us can visit uh, Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park and maybe visit you one day. That would be amazing. I will be here. I would love to see you guys. Thank you guys so much for, for tuning in today. It was great to answer all of your questions. I love your enthusiasm. Thank you guys. All right, and just to close things out, um, we will post this recording to our YouTube playlist for Meet an Expert so anyone can listen in. Please feel free to share this as a resource. Um, additionally, Girl Scouts, if you're interested, you can get your Meet an Expert um, patch on our Girl Scout shop online. Um, and I also think participating in today's webinar would also help meet requirements for um, the STEM career exploration badges, because I think, you know, talking about the environment and protecting it and all of those good things definitely falls into a STEM bucket. So thank you all again so much. I'm going to sign us off now and we really appreciate it. Have a good rest of your day.